Hello viewers, I'm the last minute professor. In this video, we shall discuss how to compute GZD of two numbers using two methods. First, a general iteration method and then recursion using the Euclidean algorithm. Wish you a time of happy learning. The greatest common divisor of two numbers, A and B, is the largest integer that divides both A and B. For instance, GCD of 8 and 12 is 4. Let us see how to calculate GCD of 8 and 12 in a step-by-step -step fashion. The first step is to list the divisors of both the numbers. Divisor here is nothing but an integer that divides another number completely with zero reminder. So, divisors of 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. Divisors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. As next step, find the divisors that are common to both the numbers. That is for 8 and for 12. What are the common divisors? So the common divisors for 8 and 12 are 1, 2 and 4. GCD is the greatest number among the common divisors. That is 4. So the GCD of 8 and 12 is 4. Similarly, GCD of 2 and 5 is 1. GCD of 4 and 8 is 4. There is something important to note. 1 divides all positive integers completely with zero reminder. Therefore, 1 is a divisor to all positive integers. Hence, GCD of any two numbers is minimum 1. The greatest common divisor for any two numbers cannot exceed the minimum of the two numbers. That is, for example, consider 8 and 12. The common divisors for 8 and 12 cannot exceed 8 because any number greater than 8 cannot be a divisor for 8. So, the GCD for any two numbers cannot exceed the minimum of the two numbers. In short, GCD of two numbers varies from 1 to minimum of the two numbers. Now, let us look into the pseudocode for applying this mathematical method to compute GCD using iteration. Read two values x and y from user. We know that GCD varies from 1 to minimum of the two numbers. Here, we are going to check in the reverse direction. Initializing the variable i as the minimum of the two user inputs, we will check if i completely divides both the user inputs. Since we are checking in the reverse direction, that is in the descending order, the first number to divide both the user inputs is the greatest common divisor. In case that value, that i value doesn't completely divide the user inputs x and y, decrement i by 1 and check if the new i value divides the user inputs completely with zero reminder. Repeat this process until we find a number that divides both user inputs. As we already discussed, minimum GCD would be 1. That is the reason here we have initialized i value to that minimum value of the two user inputs and continued until it is 1. That is while i is greater than 0. We check if i completely divides x and y with zero reminder. That is why here we are checking x modular division i is zero and y modular division i is zero. That is i completely divides both the user inputs x and y. 
in that scenario print i value as gcd and stop that is break out of this while loop else that is if that i value does not divide both the user inputs completely decrement the i value by 1 and continue the same loop for that updated i value while the i value is greater than 0 consider an example what is the gcd of 4 and 6 so starting from minimum of the two user inputs here we will check if 4 divides 4 and 6 completely no so does 3 divide 4 and 6 completely no does 2 divide 4 and 6 completely yes so print 2 as gcd so we will find the execution sequence for this pseudo code line by line now for finding gcd of 4 and 6 so i the user input x is 4 and y is 6 now here we are finding the minimum of x and y that is the minimum value among the user input and we are setting it to minimum so x is less than y that is is 4 less than 6 true so set it as the minimum value so the minimum of the user inputs it has been stored in a variable called minimum now initialize this value as i value so i is equal to minimum so while i is greater than 0 that is is 4 greater than 0 yes true so now what we are going to do is we are going to check if 4 completely divides both the user inputs so is 4 modular division 4 0 and 6 modular division 4 0 this is true but this is not true so we are having and gate in between so this would return false so if it is false the statements inside if will not get executed so these statements will get skipped and the line after that gets executed decrement i by 1 so now i value becomes 3 again the condition is checked the control passes here so i value is that greater than 0 true so this is gets repeated again so here the condition gets checked so it becomes false again so these statements are skipped and i value gets decremented it becomes 2 again it gets checked so now if 4 is completely divisible by 2 and 6 is completely divisible by 2 yes true that is two divides both the user inputs so in that case the statements inside the if gets executed so we have two lines inside the if so print i so the gcd value is printed as the i value so this is the answer and here what happens break so the break statement will break out of the while loop after that it ends that's it now let us move to the next method basic euclidean approach to calculate gcd of two numbers using recursion euclidean method uses a simple technique to find gcd here the base case is when any one of the two numbers is zero the non zero number is the gcd suppose we have to find gcd of a and 0 the gcd is a similarly if we have to find gcd for 0 and b gcd is b this is the base case any one of the numbers will be 0 so the other number would be the gcd recursive case is a condition where the function calls itself in recursive case here we use equivalence property instead of finding gcd for two large numbers we simplify the task by finding gcd for two equivalent small numbers by applying a simple technique that is when both the numbers are positive 
that is non zero positive numbers in that case what we will be doing is we will be making it a simplified task by calculating gcd of the smallest number and the number obtained by replacing the larger number by the remainder obtained by dividing the larger number by the smaller number so in programming context we can simply write as gcd of a comma b is equal to gcd of b modular division a the b is the larger number b modular division a and the smaller number a so the larger smaller etc will be dealing mathematically but in the programming context it will automatically set its way so we'll see it with an example when we explain the pseudo code now let us dive deep into the pseudo code read two values x y from user call the euclidean function by passing these two user inputs and store the resultant answer and print the answer so now this call this function call here pass this x and y so here the procedure will receive these values so the value of x will be passed to a and the value of y will be passed to b so now let us see what happens here what does this euclidean function do if a is 0 it returns b else return make a call to the same euclidean function that is we are simplifying the task to a smaller thing by calculating euclidean of b modular division a and a what happens here let us see with two examples in the first case we will be finding gcd of two numbers where the first number is less than the second number in the second case we will be finding gcd for two numbers where the first number is greater than the second number so in the first case let us find gcd for 8 and 12 so a value here is 8 and b value here is 12 that is here when it gets passed x will be assigned the value 8 and y will get the value 12 as it makes here the function call a will take the value 8 and b will take the value 12 so now a value is not 0 so else part will get executed that is euclidean of b modular division a comma a that is 12 modular division 8 comma 8 that is euclidean of 12 modular division 8 is 4 4 comma 8 now again consider this here a value is 4 and b value is 8 now a value is not 0 so else part get executed that is euclidean of b modular division a comma a b modular division a is 8 modular division 4 comma 4 so 8 modular division 4 is 0 so euclidean of 0 comma 4 so now here a value is 0 then you have to return b the b value is 4 so the gcd is 4 that's how euclidean gets calculated so this is the case where a value is less than b let us look into a case where a value is greater than b for example 4 and 3 so now what happens is when we call this x will take the value 4 and y will take the value 3 so a gets the value 4 and b gets the value 3 so a is not 0 so else part will get executed in else part what is there euclidean of b modular division a comma a that is euclidean of 3 modular division 4 comma 4 so now 3 modular division 4 when we divide 3 by 4 the remainder is 3 so it becomes euclidean of 3 comma 4 that is if we see the numbers are clearly swapped this is the reason why it does not make any change when we do it in the programming context so we will get the perfect output so now in this case again 
a value is not zero so what happens euclidean you know, of b modular division a comma a so four modular division three comma three so four modular division three is one so euclidean you know, of one comma three again now a value is not zero so else part gets executed euclidean you know, of b modular division a comma a that is euclidean you know, of three modular division one comma one that is euclidean you know, of zero comma one so now a value becomes zero so if it is zero it has to return b that is one so gcd of four and three is one that's it to encourage and support this work do like share and subscribe thank you for watching